we Jump Street, and we're about to jump in your ass. Mm -hmm. Right in the crack. This is Dave Chen from SlashFilm.com. And this is Jermaine Lucier from SlashFilm.com. And we are here to review 22 Jump Street. Jermaine Lucier, it's been a couple years since Phil Lord and Chris Miller brought 21 Jump Street to the big screen. You called 22 Jump Street one of the best films of the summer. Why did you say that? I think because uh, we're about halfway through the summer, and while I've enjoyed many films this summer, this one felt like a non-stop. The roller coaster ride is such a cliche, but that's almost what this felt like. From the instant it started, before we even saw uh, uh, any bit of film, when you just got the studio logos, it just drew you in with its score, and it had a great big first scene, and just it kept up that pace with just jokes and action the entire time. And that's what you want in a summer movie: is just to be wholly entertained and just lose yourself in a movie and 22 Jump Street did that for me. I enjoyed 22 Jump Street quite a bit as well. I thought the chemistry between Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum is pretty awesome. There's some really funny bits satirizing the fact that they are doing a sequel to a reboot of a TV series uh, <laughs> and it's very meta and self-aware and as a film watcher I enjoy that kind of thing. Uh, I also think there's a lot of really creative gags and some stuff that kind of is a carryover from Lord and Miller's work in animation. It's stuff that rewards repeat watching. Overall, it just it was a really great time at the theater. I mentioned that it makes fun of the fact that it is a sequel, a more expensive sequel with higher expectations, uh, but that they're just going to repeat what they did the last time. It's making fun of the fact that it's a repetitive sequel, uh, but in making fun of that, does it, in fact, become a repetitive sequel? It does and it doesn't. I think the first half of the movie does. I think, and it's very, very conscious of that fact. Um, one of the great things about the first movie was how Schmidt and Jenko flipped roles. You expected, you know, uh, Jenko to be the jock. He became the drama nerd, the nerd. And then you expected Schmidt to be, you know, vice versa. You understand. In this movie, the first half of the movie, it sticks with the roles you expect. Jenko is the jock. Jonah uh, Schmidt's the nerd. And it's repeating all the same thing. It's going through the exact same beats of this drug thing. And then in about middle of act two, it's like, whoa, we were wrong. And it just flips the entire thing. And I think that's where it goes from becoming a repetitive sequel, very, very specifically to a really good sequel where it's, it was aware of itself. It played with itself. Oh, it played with itself, I was about to say, which I think they, Phil and Chris would probably enjoy. And then it sort of transcends itself and becomes something that's not as repetitive. And it goes different places where you don't expect. And I think the relationship of theirs really evolves here. And I remember reading, and I was on the set of the film, they kept talking about the crux of the movie was that it shouldn't be a narrative sequel, it should be a sequel to their relationship. And, you know, they, they sort of got together in the first movie, and this movie is what happens after you've been together for a long time. And you really see that in the second half of the movie. So for those reasons, I think it parries itself, yes, but in a, re in a way that it does it on purpose, and then it does rise above it. Yeah, and even if it is repetitive, even if it does repeat the same story beats, uh, I still found it to be hugely enjoyable. And, I mean, when you talk about The Hangover 2, for example, comparing that to The Hangover mm. 1, you know, that movie hit almost exactly the same story beats. Uh, many of the same story beats are also hit here as well, but I feel like it presents them in a fresh enough way that I never got bored. It matures in front of you, the movie. like, And I think that's just Miller and Lord really working the, uh, the screenplay uh, and really just their performances and uh, everything about it just is done so smartly. Uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah people. Jinx buy me a Coke. Oh, snap, man. We're still saying the same thing. This is amazing. Carrots. That's crazy. We have that brother connection too. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You ready? Yep. Hi, Paper slips. Baby Bananas. Beats, I don't know. Anger. Words. Quit Shoes. Sand. Boom. Yeah, that was, that was. That's our review of 22 Jump Street out in theaters this week. I'm David Chen. I'm Jermaine Lucier. And thanks for watching at slashfilm.com.